Hey folks, today we're gonna to be talking about galvanic cells, how to draw them, how to represent them here. Um, so, just flip over here. We have this question that I've created here. We wanna create an electrochemical cell using aluminum Al to Al3 plus and lead Pb to Pb2 plus half cells. Um, our tasks are to determine the two <clears throat> half reactions involved and which undergo under oxidation, which one will be reduced. So, just as a preview for you here, uh, this is typically what a galvanic cell will look like. So what we'll have is two strips of metal placed in beakers. Um, those beakers usually contain some sort of sulfide or some sort of nitrate solution, something very soluble. And what we'll have is the movement of electrons from one of the things to the other. And we'll attach an anode cathode to that and uh, either a voltmeter or something to be able to track how quickly those electrons are being moved around. You can think of this sort of like a battery that we have the movement of electrons to one side. The idea is that whatever side the anode is on, that material is going to actually leave the strip and enter the solution. So you can see this aluminum arrow here, it's gonna leave the strip and enter the solution. With this part over here, what we're gonna have is we're going to have the lead leaving the solution and being added onto the strip. And so we usually expect this strip to be a little bit bigger. So this is the final solution that we'll get to, but I'm gonna work us through the process of how we actually get to that final solution. So what we have right now is we have the Al and Al3 plus um, as one of our one of our little pieces of metal that we'll use, be using. So I have that highlighted here. You can see the Al3 plus to minus uh, plus three <laughs> electrons turns to Al solid. And we have a negative 1.66 as our potential difference. Uh, so we have the Al3 plus plus three electrons going to produce Al solid and our electron, our potential difference was negative 1.66. It's equal to negative 1.66, okay? Uh, the other one that we have is this Pb, Pb2 plus. I have that one highlighted over here as well. We have Pb2 plus plus two electrons to react to produce this Pb solid. Pb2 plus plus two electrons reacts to produce this Pb solid. And then our potential difference for that one is negative 0.13. So this E degree is negative 0.13, okay? And so what we need to do with this part here, one of the key parts of this particular question is that in order for this reaction to happen, we need to have a positive potential difference. What you'll also notice right now is that in both of these reactions, Right now, both of them are gaining electrons. So if we think about Lyoger, gain of electrons is reduction. Right now, both of these are being reduced. We need one of them to be oxidized. And so what we end up doing is we end up flipping one of these reactions and we end up flipping whatever one is more negative, has a more negative potential difference. So we're gonna flip this aluminum reaction. We're gonna do the exact same reaction, but now I'm just writing it in the reverse direction. And the reason that we do that um, is in order for this reaction to be spontaneous. So in order for this reaction to happen, as soon as we start inserting the ingredients of our galvanic cell, we need to make sure that it is a spontaneous reaction. Similar to uh, exothermic reactions where they will happen automatically, they don't require an input of any energy or anything. If we have a negative uh, potential difference overall value for this, this reaction will not just randomly occur that we, or in the way that we want it to. So another problem that we have here is we have um, three electrons being uh, released in our uh, reduction or in our oxidation reaction here. We have three electrons being released in our oxidation reaction. We only have two in our reduction. So what we need to do is multiply this entire thing by three and multiply this entire thing by two. You can think about it as like getting the quote unquote common denominator or the uh, lowest common factor, I think is the term that they used back in grade three. So now we have our new oxidation reaction, Al solid reacts to produce, and that'll be two of these, reacts to produce two Al3 plus, plus six electrons. Oops, 
plus six electrons. And then our bottom, our reduction reaction, we now have three Pb2 pluses plus six electrons reacts to produce three Pb solids. So you'll notice I didn't adjust any of these E potential values at all. Um, and the reason is that um, I wanted to overall have those values stay the exact same. And so what we end up with then overall here is we basically take these two different equations. So we take the E potential of the one plus 1.66 and we take the E potential of this negative 0 0.13 and you basically just add them together. You basically, yeah, just stack them, add them, whatever's the same. So these six electrons, you can just cancel those out similar to balancing oxidation reactions. But what we end up with is this 2ALS plus 3PB2 plus reacts to produce two, oops, sorry, 2Al3 plus plus 3PB. And then our overall E potential here is we take plus 1.66, subtract to the 0.133, and we end up with an overall 1.53 volts. Okay. Uh, so now that we have all of the information, we can actually start to draw our cell. And so my favorite artist of all time is Bob Ross, of course. Of course he is. Um, but as we know, Bob Ross has secretly had a secret identity this entire time. Um, yeah, and it's... It's me. <laughs> uh, it's pathetic meme. Super sorry. Uh, so what we're going to do now is actually go about drawing one of these cells. Okay, so we're going to draw our actual cell here. Let me just give myself some space. So what we need to start off with here is there's a couple things we need to start off with. Um, we need to, I'm going to zoom out a bit just so I give myself a bit more room here. We need to draw our two beakers. Okay, and then what we need to do is draw in our two pieces of metal. So I'm gonna draw in this piece of metal here, color it nice and green, and that piece of metal will be our aluminum. We're gonna draw our aluminum on the right side. And then on the right side, sorry, on the left side, our aluminum is on the right side. I'm gonna do in red, red lead, so red PB. And so what we know based on this reaction is that the electrons are going to be leaving the electrons are going to be leaving the um, <laughs> they're going to be leaving the aluminum I don't know why that took me such a long time to think of those words and they are going to be joining up with the lead and so what we're going to do is we are going to attach we're going to attach a voltmeter to this so we have this here So what we want is we want the electrons to flow towards the more positive thing. So right now, this PB, if we were currently just looking at this, this PB would have a plus two charge on it. And so what we want is we want the electrons to flow towards that plus two charge. So I'm just going to give myself a green again here. And we're going to say that these electrons are going to be traveling in this direction and our voltmeter then will give us some sort of reading and we already have determined that that reading will be 1.53 volts and we determined that up here okay the other thing that we need in these two solutions is in both of the solutions they'll be submerged in some sort of liquid solution okay the solution of the right-hand side will actually be PbNO3, PbNO3. The solution on the left side, on the left side here, will be NO3, like that. Uh, and so what we're going to do then as well is we're going to attach what's called a salt bridge 
salt bridge. And this salt bridge will be made of potassium nitrate. Um, basically any type of salt can be that salt bridge. But what this serves to do is replenish whatever is leaving or whatever is joining the solution. So what we expect to be happening here is we expect this aluminum to leave the actual solid piece. So in our reaction, this aluminum was solid. We expect it to leave and gain a plus three charge. And so that Al3 plus will join the solution. And so what we need then is from our salt bridge, we need there to be an input of NO3. And those NO3s and ALs will join up together. What we expect to happen on the right hand side is we expect these PBs to join up with the actual um, strip of PB. So what we end up seeing is we see that we have three PB2 plus, and then it'll actually join up with this PB here. And so what we need then is we're losing positively charged ions in this solution. And so we need the salt bridge to contribute K plus to this solution so that it can join up with the NO3 that's lost from this PBNO3. So that's what we need. What we end up getting then is uh, overall solutions of we'll have an ALNO3 solution and we'll have more of a KNO3 solution towards the end. That's sort of what we expect. The other thing, the last thing that we kind of need to talk about is the terms that are associated. So whatever is going to be, um, uh, we have an ox and red cat. Those are the two terms that we're going to use. So whatever is the anode, whatever side we want to put the anode on is whatever side is being oxidized. And we said this aluminum side is being oxidized, so we know this side will be the anode. Whatever side is being reduced, we want to put the cathode. And so this side is being reduced, and we'll put the cathode here. And that's overall how we draw a galvanic cell. We end up with this little diagram here. Um, the only important things really to mention are the type of salt bridge that you're using and then these little arrows of where the AL is going, where the PB is going, and then the direction of the electrons and then labeling anode cathode. Those are sort of the most important ideas of this. So that's how you draw a galvanic cell. Hope that was helpful. Talk to you later.